Hey everybody, welcome to our channel. Hey guys, we're your hosts, M and J, and today we're talking about issue 7 of Captain Marvel 2019. This is also the second part of the War of the Realms tie-in. We haven't been reading War of the Realms, so all we know about it is from the inside blurb of this comic. But honestly, this comic hasn't really inspired us to check out the rest of the event. It's probably really expensive anyway, so it's for the best. This tie-in ends up being a body swap storyline, where Carol switches bodies with Stephen Strange. Apparently, this is something that Marvel is kind of doing right now. There's also a storyline with Peter Parker swapping bodies with Kamala Khan, but it doesn't add for much variety in the comics. Plus, you kind of have to be careful with body swap stories. At least Carol and Stephen Strange are both adults. Peter's a grown man and Kamala's a teenage girl, so that's kind of creepy. But unfortunately, this body swap story is pretty by the numbers. The interesting thing about body swapping is the characters that are actually swapping bodies and how they react to this situation. It can be especially interesting with superheroes that also have to get used to a whole new set of powers, but that doesn't really work here because Doctor Strange's powers aren't actually tied to his body. They tried to explain this in the last issue by having the Enchantress just keep his powers away, but it kind of feels like they just wanted an excuse to have this story. I'm just not really buying it. We also felt like this tie-in could have been one issue instead of two because not a lot happens throughout the course of it and having a tighter story would have helped the pacing a lot. The book opens on this kind of awkward shot of Steven yelling at Carol to use a spell which she does manage to pull off even though it's a weak form of it. While Strange finally manages to activate her photon blast, we're told again about how powerful Carol's body is even though that was already established and we really don't need to be constantly reminded of this. It gets to a point where it just feels like they're bragging. They manage to beat that group of zombies and then retreat back into the jungle. Black Widow says she wants to make camp before nightfall because they don't know how many hordes of zombies will have to fight before they can face the Enchantress. Carol asks if she can just magically teleport them, and Steven basically tells her that she's not ready for that kind of magic, but they're written with very similar voices. Part of the fun of body swap stories is seeing different voices in different bodies. Strange says, yeah, we are so not doing that with you in charge of the magic. I'm not convinced that's how Steven would speak. Having characters speak differently makes it easier for the audience to recognize them, which is something that the two of us actually know firsthand. A lot of people had trouble recognizing that there was actually two of us. Part of that was because as twins we do have very similar voices, but we also have very similar ways of speaking, which might come from having the same upbringing, and usually being on the same page. Hopefully the visuals can help with that. So when writing a body swap story, it's really important to remember each character's distinct voice. That way the reader can really feel like these are two different people who have switched bodies, instead of just being told that. The next three pages are just Carol and Steven sitting around a campfire talking about magic and TV, while Natasha fights a crocodile in the background. This book has a surprising lack of urgency considering the fact that there's a zombie army going around killing killing people, but the heroes just sit around and talk for hours and hours. Here it says it's been several hours, and that's on top of the six hours from last issue. They're really just letting all this time go by? I get the situation isn't what they were expecting, but still. Then the page after the three pages of the two of them just sitting around and talking is a Natasha complaining about being left alone to deal with the crocodile, and also complaining about the situation in general. So she wants them to eat the crocodile she just killed. It's one thing to have these moments of levity to break the tension, but they basically just forgot to write tension altogether, and it really doesn't help the pacing. So 24 hours pass and they're finally in the fight. Carol wants to get through the zombies so they can just get to the Enchantress. She's able to use some magic to boost her Captain Marvel powers so Stephen Strange can wipe out the zombies. She also tries a more advanced spell to hold the Enchantress, but the Enchantress isn't impressed. She taunts Carol and says that her magic is weak and that she's an expert in magic and her armies will be back in no time. She says that Stephen Strange isn't a match for her and Carol is no Stephen Strange. So Carol decides to stop trying to be Stephen and just be herself, which I think is an alright lesson for a body swap story. So she uses magic to turn the zombie horde against the Enchantress. The thing that I'm confused about is the Enchantress was just saying that her magic was weak and unfocused, and this seems like a pretty big spell. 
that and when she said that she was just gonna be herself, I wasn't expecting her to use a magic-based solution. I mean, she's not a magic user, and this feels like something a magic user would have come up with. The Enchantress gets overwhelmed by this. I'm surprised she wasn't able to reverse this the way she was able to reverse Carol's other attempts. Instead, she's forced to focus all of her energy in trying to keep the hordes of zombies at bay, which causes Carol and Steven to revert back to their true bodies, because the Enchantress can't hold them anymore. Back in their proper bodies, Steven compliments Carol about how he probably wouldn't have been able to notice that solution. Well, I'm glad it's over, but it honestly felt a little weird. How did Carol even know she could do that? Or how to do it? But Natasha insists that she's had enough of them and decides to leave. The last page of this comic is Carol back at her apartment 10 days after the War of the Realms. Carol's getting back into the swing of things, but she coughs into a napkin and when she puts it down it looks like it's bloody. Where did that come from? Apparently there's rumors that they're going to kill her off and replace her with a new character. Not sure if those rumors are true, but this doesn't look very good. You all know that we're not really fans of Carol Danvers, but that doesn't mean they have to kill her off. They just need someone to write her as a good, strong character. Portray her as a hero who doesn't leave innocent people behind. One who isn't egotistical or locks people up for crimes they haven't committed yet and maybe never will commit. Is that really so difficult? Honestly, this story wasn't as bad as the last story. It was a little generic, but at least it had a proper conclusion and no one was left behind. It was slowly paced and kind of boring, but at least the bad guy didn't get away this time. Although the Enchantress is more interesting than Nuclear Man, and I'd rather see more of her. Overall, Captain Marvel 2019 felt more like an agenda than a story meant to entertain people. The first arc was all about girl power, then these last two issues were just a tie into War of the Realms, and now they're apparently going to kill her off, which kind of feels like a Death of Superman type of shock value. Buy this comic because aren't you curious? She had such a successful movie and yet we're going to kill her off, but no one's ever really gone, are they? Instead of just writing fun, compelling stories to get people's attention, they're going for all these different marketing ploys. It's disappointing because I do remember Carol being a compelling character back in the day, but instead of building on that, they just rewrote her to have this unlikable personality. And now they're going to kill her off because she suddenly has tuberculosis, which feels like it came out of nowhere. But that's just our opinion. What do you guys think? I'm kind of just annoyed. I don't even like this character, but now I'm supposed to care that she's gonna be killed off? We're not even invested. But thanks for watching. We really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, you can leave a like and subscribe to this channel for more content like this. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye everyone. Bye guys.